Oli here and this is my review of The Tenth Planet, the second story of season 4 and the final story of William Hartnell as the first Doctor. The Tenth Planet is also 4 episodes long, written by Kip Heller and Jerry Davis and this story is also the 29th story overall. This is also a very historic episode for Doctor Who as it features the Cybermen for the very first time and the very first time we see the Doctor regenerate. Also, every episode apart from episode 4 exists, but thankfully, the missing episode 4 has been animated for DVD. So the plot of the story is as follows. The TARDIS lands in the, at the South Pole in the year 1986. Nearby, they find the Snowcap Base, a space tracking station commanded by General Cutler. The base is supervising the mission of the Zeus 4 spaceship, running a routine probe on the Earth's atmosphere. The spaceship is drawn off course by an unknown force and snowcap monitoring staff discover a new, unknown planet approaching Earth. Recognising identical landmasses to those of Earth, the Doctor reveals that this is Wonders, Earth's, the Earth's long-lost long, lo, <laughs> long twin planet, and its inhabitants will soon be visiting Earth. In my opinion, the 10th planet, when I first watched it, to be honest, I wasn't really a big fan of it. I liked it, but I thought it was just average. It was only overhyped because this features the Cybermen and for the first time we also see the Doctor regenerate. But early on in the year, I actually watched it again and my opinion changed. I thought it was a very good episode. So yeah, maybe it took me twice to watch it to actually appreciate how good the story was. Before I get to the main topics, I want to talk about the production of the story. Which never fails in my opinion, as with all other stories, even missing or not. I liked the snow, I liked how Antarctica was portrayed with the snow everywhere and how just eerie it was. And the script, I must say, was very good. I mean, it was probably the best script of this season so far. But this story actually gave us some very iconic quotes and very iconic moments. The plot itself was pretty good. I liked the concept of the Z-bomb and, and I liked how Mondas was destroyed because of it. And it was destroyed because it absorbed too much energy from Earth. Yeah, and the direction was fantastic. I liked how the, this story introduced a new format of Doctor Who story. This is like pretty much the first based on the siege story. This is basically where the Doctor and his companions must defend a certain base space or whatever from... The monster and we do can we do definitely see a lot of these stories from this point onwards and this is pretty much introduces the topic of it but compared to other based on the siege stories the doctor actually doesn't do a whole lot but obviously because of <clears throat> William Hartnell's health and the plot didn't really include him that a whole lot he just he felt he collapsed in episode three and then recovered in episode four kind of collapsed again and Towards the end, and then when the Cybermen are defeated, <clears throat> they go back to the TARDIS and the Doctor just regenerates. And I must say, and I think there were some very tense moments in this episode. I mean, for example, when we first see the Cybermen, the soldiers of that Snook base were like investigating the outside, and then the Cybermen just come in and just kill the troops. And, that, and then at the end of episode one, we just see a close up of them, we just see the Cybermen with their very uncanny faces. That was just. Wow, I really enjoyed that. The Cybermen themselves, they had a very different design compared to the other Cybermen models and we only see this model once in Classic Crew and then they get a new design in the Moon Base which is later on in the season. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, so this is actually the first time we see of the Mandasian Cybermen and we don't see the Mandasian Cybermen again until series 10 of the new series when they come back with Capaldi's final, well, one of Capaldi's final stories. And also, then these Cybermen actually had names such as Crow, Talon, and etc. We don't see this again until the, until season twelve. I think we had Ashad, the the lone Cyberman. I think he was like pretty much the first Cyberman since this story to actually have names. And I must say, the Cyberman, the Mandasian Cyberman. I think is the, probably the scariest Cyberman design, design yet. I mean, the design after that was actually quite scary as well. And then, the, but to be fair, this is probably one of the scariest Cyberman designs. And I think <coughs> this is where Classic Crew actually excels in terms of Cyberman. They were better written 
in the classics and they were a lot scarier compared to the new series. And it was very effective for this story. I honestly love the music of this story. I would say that this piece of music is probably one of my favourite pieces of music from Doctor Who. It's actually called Space Adventure Part 2 and they use this music a, part, a few times in Doctor Who. Namely Tomb of the Cybermen and they're all coming out of their tombs. That was simply iconic. And I like how they used it so many times after the, the story. Even though in the Tomb of the Cybermen music when they come out, they don't actually use it in this story. They just use like bits and pieces of it, but then they use it again in Moonbase, Tomb of the Cybermen. They even use it in The Web of Fear, which wasn't actually a Cybermen episode, but I wish they used it in The Invasion or The Wheel in Space. The animated episode 4 was alright. A bit flawed, but it was okay. It was done by Planet 55, and then they animate... A few other stories after the 10th planet. I think they even animated um, what's it called, the Reign of Terror for the first the first animation since the Invasion. That was pretty good, and I think they even worked with Big Big Finish as well. But the animation for that story was quite good. I mean, it was a bit of a letdown here. I mean, yeah, it was still good, but then I kind of thought that the Doctor actually looked more scary than the Cybermen in the animation. <laughs> to be honest, but it was the animation was quite good. I mean, I liked. How it was and how they made the Cybermen melt. That was pretty cool and it was pretty scary as well. I mean, it was quite good. I mean, so now onto the characters. They're all quite good. William Hunt, he obviously did his best, but obviously because of his health issues and this was one of the main reasons why he left the show. Sure, he didn't actually do a whole lot. I mean, Ben and Polly and the other Snowcap crew actually carried the story. And I think in episode 3, General Carter actually got some of the Doctor's lines. And so, I liked his bit in episode 4, for the Doctor, and after the Cybermen were defeated, the Doctor was, he was very weak, and he was like, it's far from being all over, and then we just like, in the animation, he actually walked into the camera, and that was, even a clip actually ex survives of that, so and that was a very good moment, but then, obviously we know, he, the Doctor actually goes back to the TARDIS to meet the 12th, no, he walks out and actually meets the 12th Doctor who actually landed nearby in, and that actually does, that leads up to Twice Upon a Time, which is a story I really do not like, but I'll get to that in due course. <laughs> ben actually impresses me here, as he actually gets to do more of the heavy lifting, and and it was all due to his action manual, which he pretty much took over from Steven. I liked when he was locked in the film room by the Cybermen, and then he finds one of the films, and then... He lures one of the Cybermen in and then he pretty much uses the projector and to like blend the Cybermen to escape and then that was pretty cool for back then. I really liked how Ben was established there and now he was involved in the making the Z bomb been that by the Cybermen in that story with the radiation places and all that. That was I mean this Ben actually this is pretty much a sort of story for Ben more or less. The side characters were very good and then yeah, I do feel that some of them were like outshined, like Barkley for instance, he was quite cool, I mean, but I feel like he was overshined by the Cybermen, obviously the story was more about them than the other, I mean, the other side characters of this episode. But considering that this is the very first appearance of the Cybermen, but I'll excuse that. And also in general cut, like, he kind of stands out because he was a bit of a, a, bit of a dick, considering the fact he was American. <laughs> I kind of see why, <laughs> but I think he was pretty much stressed because his son was on that, was on the Zeus 4 spaceship, and then obviously that went missing, I think his stress like increased tenfold, and he starts being like an arrogant ass to everyone else, and starts being like, like grumpy, you know, like even more grumpy than heart now, <laughs> and then obviously to, in episode 4 he gets killed by the Cybermen, and then obviously when all that is over and done with, we actually find out that his son actually survived, so... Pretty ironic, wasn't it? <laughs> now, as I mentioned before, this is the first Doctor Swan song. His body pretty much wore thin, and he was very exhausted by the end of this story. But considering the fact that this story is after came before the smugglers and the war machines, and and that even became came after the savages. So I think I do have a theory that when the when the savages, no, sorry, not the savages, when the elders in that story pretty much drained the doctor from his life was I think that was pretty much made the doctor's body weak and then that's how he was starting to like I think that's what 
might have been a cause for his regeneration. And obviously with Wharton and all that, I think he just, pretty much like Houghton, I think he just started getting a bit exhausted. So, I uh, those is, but it actually was a very good way to write off Hartnell. I mean, even though he had to leave because of his health issues and in the adventures of space, the adventure of space and time, it actually portrayed Hartnell's weak, health issues, making him very weak. And then, obviously, when he was told that he has to leave, he goes down to his wife, goes to his, goes, goes home, tells his wife, I don't want to go. That was heartbreaking. I mean, it must have been very hard for Hartnell to, like, leave the show because... Hartnell was amazing as a doctor. I mean, I'll get more on that later on, but then it was just, it was very heartbreaking. So we obviously, the doctor collapses, regenerates, well, you just see the TARDIS taking off and then like a bright light just flashing over and then all of a sudden we see Patrick Shelton on the floor. <laughs> and a clip of the regeneration actually exists as well, so thank God for that. <laughs> so obviously I do have some issues with the story. I mean... Some parts did drag a little bit, but I can overlook it, to be honest. I understand that, obviously, because of Hartnell's health issues, he doesn't actually do a whole lot, but that pretty much... And I felt that this story was pretty much a way to just get rid of Hartnell as soon as possible. I understand because of his health issues, and he doesn't appear in episode 3, but... It was still... Yeah, it still kind of irks me, and then Polly at the same time, even though she impressed, she impressed me in The Smugglers, but in this story, she doesn't really do anything. I mean, she just... She's just there. I mean, she does have a moment with the Doctor when she's confronting the Cybermen. And we have Polly actually, like, arguing with the Cybermen, saying, You're going to leave us all today. How can you do that? You don't have any heart or anything. And I mean, that was pretty cool for, for Polly. But then, after that, she doesn't really do anything. I mean, she does get kidnapped by the Cybermen. And then, along with the Doctor, and they're on the Cybermen ship. And then, she, I think she was told to make coffee at one point. I mean... Is that really what you want to be doing for your companion? But, yeah. But as I said before, the, sub- the Tenth Planet is a very important story for the Doctor, Doctor Who mythos. And it's quite good. And I'll give the story an 8 out of 10. My next review will be the first Patrick Troughton story. The Power of the Daleks. And this is the first time we see the Daleks since the Daleks Master Plan. Ooh, I can't wait for that. So, that's it for William Hartnell. We don't see him again until the three doctors as the doctor. But even though in that story, he doesn't actually do much because once again, his health issues. And I think he was starting to get a bit worse at that point. And he actually does like, I think two years after the story aired. Yeah. So I want to share my opinions of the first doctor. So when then I'm doing my reviews, when I get to an end of a certain doctor's era, like when I get to the review of War Games... Planet of the Spiders, I'll be talking about the, that Doctor's... Sorry, <laughs> that was a fly. So, I'll only be talking about the Doctor's specific era. So, for William Hartnell, I must say, without William Hartnell, I don't think there'll be Doctor Who today. I mean, he really loved that role, even though because of his health issues and how he was messing up on his lines. I think he definitely enjoyed being the Doctor. I think that definitely gave his life more purpose. And you can definitely see it in his acting. He was very, He was very passionate and then... Obviously, when he had to leave, he was quite heartbroken. I kind of understand that. So, I don't think he was the sort of person that actually liked too much change. I mean, he didn't really like when Jacqueline Hill and William Russell left as Ian and Barbara. I and mean, he wasn't really happy. And then it actually showed in that moment in the chase. He was he generally wasn't happy that they were leaving. But he had his moment. The Doctor had his moments. I loved his character development from the grumpy old man we saw. In an, in an unearthly child wanting to actually kill one of the cavemen to this heroic alien from Gallifrey who would actually stand up to injustice despite his old despite his old age and his you no know, he looked like an old man but he didn't he just wanted to like stand up for anything that wasn't right and I definitely think that was definitely a defining moment for the doctor and obviously that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Ian and Barbara who the first companions who I would say would actually shape who the Doctor is today. So um, I thank William Hartnell for making the Doctor such an iconic character. And I thank him for pretty much making Doctor Who for us. For, for us for, to be going on for the past 57 years. So thanks for watching this review. Let me know what you thought of this story. And the template itself. And do you think William Hartnell got a good send off? Let me know in the comments. So until then. See you later.